So hello dear students, good afternoon. Good afternoon to one and all. Am I visible and audible to all of you? Yeah, good afternoon, Ahashira. So can you all able to see me and hear me? Yes, yes or no? Yes, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So let's start. So I think today we can complete this hydrocarbon lesson. In the last class, we have uh, uh, discussed the alkyne part, right? So we have uh, completed alkanes, alkenes, and we are in alkynes now. And in alkynes, we have completed the introduction, nomenclature, and the preparation of alkynes, physical properties of alkenes. Okay, so now in today's class, we are moving on to the chemical properties. So before moving on to the exact chemical reactions of alkynes, we are going to deal with the acidic character of alkynes. Okay, so let us study about the acidic character of alkynes and then we will move on to the chemical reactions of alkynes. Okay, so moving on to the acidic character of alkynes. So alkynes, alkyne carbons are acidic in nature. So what is the evidence of acidic nature? The evidence is the liberation of hydrogen gas when ethyne reacts with sodium metal. Okay, so I'm going to take an ethyne and this ethyne is reacting with the sodium metal and uh, they are producing the acetylide ion and uh, hydrogen gas is evolved. Okay, so this hydrogen gas evolution says that the uh, Alkyne contains acidic hydrogen in it. Okay, means acidic means the H plus is coming out from the compound. H plus is coming out from the compound. The compound which donates H plus ion, they are called as acids, right? So this indicates that. And alkynes react with sodamide also. Sodamide is also a base. So like sodium is a reducing agent, right? So likewise, sodamide is also a strong base in which it contains Na plus and NH2 minus. So that sodamide also reacts with this ethyne to form the monosodium ethinide ion. So to form the monosodium ethinide with the evolution of this ammonia gas. Okay. So there is Na plus and NH2 minus here and this NH2 minus will come and attack this hydrogen. So the electrons will move towards the carbon. So this alkyne carbon is attract, uh, attacking the or attracting the shared pair of electrons uh, between that uh, carbon and hydrogen bond towards itself. Okay. So it is gaining the negative charge and the sodium is going and forming the bond. So it is Na plus and NH2 is coming out. Okay. So these two reactions shows that alkynes are acidic in nature. So why? What is the reason why alkynes are acidic in nature? So I'll explain you. So why they are acidic? So there is an explanation for this acidic nature of alkynes. Okay. So let us see that first. So let me take an ethane for you again. So CH triple bond CH. So we have two carbons here. So both the carbons are sp hybridized carbon. Okay. Both the carbons are sp hybridized carbon in which the S character, S character of the uh, system is 50 percentage. Okay. That is 50 percentage S character in the sp hybridized system. So in sp3, we all know, right? sp3, what is the percentage of S character and P character? In sp3, so it is 1 is to 3 ratio. So S character is 25% and P character is 75%. So like in case of uh, sp2, it is 1 and 2. So it is around, S character is around 33.3 and the P character is around 66.6 percentage. Okay. So now in case of sp, it is 1 is to 1 ratio. So that is 50 percentage of S character and 50 percentage of P character. Okay. Now, S character, the percentage of S character is directly proportional to the acidity. The percentage of S character is directly proportional to acidity or electronegativity, we can say. It is directly proportional to electronegativity. So the compound which has the highest S character is more electronegative in nature. More electronegative in nature. So here if you see, 
sp hybridized system is having the highest s character okay sp hybridized system is having the highest s character means so they are uh, more electronegative carbon sp hybridized carbon these two carbons are more electronegative in nature okay so if the system is more electronegative so what is the meaning of electronegativity the tendency of uh, attracting the shared pair of electrons towards itself is called as electronegativity right so these electron these shared pair of electrons between the carbon and hydrogen they are uh, coming towards the carbon so hydrogen is going out as h plus by leaving its electron so that's why the, uh, alkynes are more acidic in nature okay so it is more acidic in nature got it so is the concept is this concept clear to all of you if this is clear to all of you can you let me know the answer in the chat box if it is clear just type yes in the chat box yes yes okay Aisha. so let us move on to the next slide okay so now the acidic character or the acidic strength which we are talking here is directly proportional to the ease of donating the upon this donation more easily is more acidic in nature right so this point we all know now the all hydrogen in alkynes are not acidic all the hydrogens in alkynes are not acidic in nature only those that are attached with triply bonded carbon atom are acidic only the hydrogens which are attached with triply bonded carbon atoms are acidic very important so let us take an alkyne again which is ethane here now these two hydrogens are attached with the triply bonded carbon so these two hydrogens are called acidic hydrogen okay so now when we discuss reacts with one more mole of sodium okay and the second hydrogen is also coming out second hydrogen is also coming out to form the disodium ethanoid compound to form the disodium ethanoid compound okay so these two hydrogens which are attached with the triply bonded carbon atoms are acidic in nature so now in this compound we have two acidic hydrogens so we have two acidic hydrogens in this okay now I will take one more example for you that is propane. Uh, the second example is propane. Now, in this propane, also we have three bonded carbon atom in which only one hydrogen is bonded with the triple bonded carbon atom. Only this hydrogen is bonded with the triple bonded carbon atom. Okay. Now, these, yeah, only one acidic hydrogen we have. Now, this compound on treatment with the sodium, it forms the sodium propanide. It forms the sodium propanide. Now, this sodium propanide on further treatment with sodium will not result in any of the product. Why? What is the reason for that? Because we don't have hydrogen. We have hydrogen. But two hydrogens are to the single These hydrogens are not called as hydrogens. So, this is this. so when you compare ethyne and propyne, which one is more acidic in nature? When you compare ethyne and propyne, can anyone tell me which compound is more acidic? Which compound is more acidic among ethyne and propyne? Any idea? So in ethane we have two acidic hydrogen, right? In propane we are having only one acidic hydrogen, which is more acidic. Which is more acidic? Unati? Ethane is more acidic. Ethane is more acidic because it has two acidic hydrogen. Okay, okay, good. So I hope the concept is clear. Now let us do one question. How will you differentiate between butte one nine and butte two nine? Can anyone try the answer for this? How to differentiate between butte 1 line and butte 2 line? So you should know to draw the structure of these two compounds first. And then only you can uh, find out the answer. So any idea? Can you guys try? How to differentiate 
if two compounds are given to you how will you differentiate those two compounds how can you say that this is due to one and this is due to two i so just recall the previous uh, reaction which we have uh, studied are under the acidic character of alkynes and try to find out the answer just try just give it try Not even a single student. Huh? Just give a try on it. Okay, let us discuss. Let us discuss. So let me take the structure of but 19 first. Okay. So this is but 19. So here this is carbon number 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is but 19. That is a triple bond between 1 and 2. So it is but 19. Now here is your but 2 1. 2, 3, and 4. So this is but 2i. So in but 19, we can see this particular hydrogen is attached with the triple bonded carbon. Okay. So we have one acidic hydrogen in but 19. But if you see the but 2i, we don't have any hydrogens directly attached to the triple bonded carbon. So there are no acidic hydrogens in but 2i. Okay. Now, if I treat but 19 with sodium metal, I will end up with but 19 contains acidic hydrogen. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good, Parul. Your answer is correct. So it reacts with sodium. It reacts with sodium to form this uh, sodium butenite compound with the evolution of hydrogen gas. Okay. Now, when but 2n is treated with sodium metal, so there is no reaction. There is no reaction. Why there is no reaction? So no acidic hydrogens are attached to it. Okay, so that's why the reaction will not happen and no hydrogen gases evolved out. Got it? So this is how you will differentiate. If you are getting the hydrogen gas evolving out from your container, uh, that is your test tube or beaker, you can tell that this compound is but one night. If you are not getting any gas evolving out from the container, then you can come to the conclusion that this compound is but 2 i Okay. So this is how you can differentiate by seeing the reaction mixture in the labs. Okay. So theoretically, we can find out by using the number of acidic hydrogens attached to the system. Got it? So now let us move on to one more question. So it is a statement type question. Statement 1 says that the acidic character of ethane, ethene, and ethane are in this order. Okay. Now, which one is uh, ethane here? This compound is ethane. And uh, this compound is ethene. And this compound is ethane. Right. Now, coming to statement 2. Higher the S character in the hybridization of carbon atom, more is the acidic nature. More is the acidic nature of hydrogen atom joined to it. So, ethane, if it is ethane, the hybridization is sp3. If it is ethene, the hybridization is sp2. Okay. If it is ethane, the hybridization is sp. Okay. Now, you have to find out the correct answer by seeing these two statements. So, four options are given to you. I will give you 15 to 30 seconds to solve this question. And uh, try to give me the correct answer in the chat box. Tell me whether it is option 1, 2, 3 or 4. Option 1. Very good. Very good, Aisha. That is the correct answer. Great. Option 1 is the correct answer. Statement 1 is true. Statement 2 is true. Statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1. As the S character increases, acidity also increases. So that's what the statement 2 says, right? So in statement 1, you can see ethane is more acidic in nature. And also it is SP hybridized. Okay. So both are correct and uh, 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1. Good. So we will move on to the chemical reactions of alkynes now. Moving on to the chemical properties of alkyne. The first reaction is the addition of hydrogen. So the addition reactions which we are going to see here for alkynes, it is going to be more or less same as that of alkenes. 
so in alkenes what we have done we have uh, uh, we broke the uh, pi bond present in that alkene system and we have added the corresponding compounds right so in the same way we are going to do for alkynes also so take an alkyne add h2 to it uh, add h2 to it in presence of palladium platinum or nickel so use any one of these metal catalyst you will end up with the product so how to get the product first you break this bond add one hydrogen here and another hydrogen here so we will get this product and this is an alkene and to this alkene if i add one more mole of hydrogen in presence of same metal catalyst i have to break this bond and add the hydrogens like this in the same way to get the alkene to get the alkene okay so let us see one example also with the same concept it is very very easy so i am taking an ethyne and i am adding hydrogen and i am getting ethene so to this ethene add one more mole of hydrogen and get ethane then okay. so that is about the addition of hydrogen very simple and easy so we will move on to the second reaction that is the addition of halogens so i hope there is no doubt so far from the first reaction of it am i right if you having any doubt just let me know in the chat box okay so the second reaction is addition of halogen so take the alkene no doubt okay aisha thank you so much so again we are going to add the halogen so what are halogens halogens we represent halogens like this right x2 so just like uh, how you have added the hydrogen add the add the same way with this also so take the alkene and add halogen break the bond break one of the pi bond add x and x like this and we will end up with this dihalo alkene then one more mole of halogen is added by breaking this bond we are adding one more mole also and we are getting the four halogen atom containing compound tetra halo alkene okay if you want to see this with an example so i have to propane here for you and to this propane i am going to add bromine so break the bond and add bromine like this you will end up with 1,2 dibromopropene 1 2 3 alkene should get the first preference right so it is 1,2 dibromopropene and to this propene if i add one more mole of bromine what i will get breaking this bond and adding the bromine like this it is 1 2 and 3 so numbering has to be given only for carbons okay so uh, to carbon number 1 we have two bromine and two for carbon number 2 we have two bromine so 1,1 2,2 tetra bromo propane this tetra bromo propane okay so it is also easy same way as it of uh, hydrogen now coming to the third reaction that is the addition of hydrogen halides so what are hydrogen halides hx hx is hydrogen halide right so do you remember the marconic of an anti marconic of which we have uh, seen for uh, alkenes the same thing we are going to apply here so take an alkyne and add h6 okay now uh, this alkyne is symmetrical in nature symmetrical means if i break this compound with this double triple bond i will get two equal half so this is a symmetrical compound for symmetrical system we don't have any problem we can just uh, simply break the bond and add hydrogen and x to any of the carbon right so if i do like that i will get halo alkene now to this halo alkene if i add one more mole of hx what i will get break the bond add h here and x here so now you will get dihalo alkene dihalo alkene so which is called as geminal dihalide it is called as geminal geminal is written like this gem dihal if two halogens are attached to the same carbon if two halogens are attached to the same carbon then that compound is called as geminal halide if two halogens are attached to the same carbon it is called as geminal halide if two halogens are attached to the adjacent carbon then it is called as vicinal halide we have discussed about this vicinal in the previous alkenes and alkenes right now geminal is here got it so this is the difference between geminal and vicinal dihalides now let us see an example for this addition of hydrogen halide so i am taking ethane first so to this ethane add hbr 
So break the bond. This ethane is symmetrical. So we can add it in either of the ways. And we will end up with this bromoethene. So here uh, we have added the other way around. So here bromine is added. Here bromine is added. Okay, and here hydrogen is added. And we have got this bromoethene product. Now to this product, you add one more mole of HPF. Just break the bond. And here we have to use marconic of addition, right? So to this alkene carbon, we have two hydrogen. And here we have only one hydrogen. So the addition molecule, that is H plus and Br minus. So the hydrogen of the addition molecule goes to the carbon, which has more number of hydrogen. That is marconic of addition, right? So this carbon only has two hydrogen, which is uh, more in number. So hydrogen has to go here and bromine has to go to this part. And we will get this product. And it is called as, it is 1 and 2, 1 comma 1 dibromo methane. 1 comma 1 dibromo methane. Okay. So any doubt? So here you can uh, add and here you have to use the marconica of addition. That's it. So just uh, keep the marconic of part alone here. The rest all are the same. Shall we move on to the fourth addition? That is the addition of water. Shall we go to the addition of water? Is everything clear? Yes. Okay. So moving on to? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay, Harshira. Yes. Addition of water. So let us take an example. Ethyne. And we are going to add the water. H2. Now here we have to use some catalyst and that catalyst is a mercuric sulfate, mercury sulfate. So from that mercury sulfate, mercury ion is uh, interacting here and it is the metal and in presence of acid that is H plus and you have to heat this uh, mixture to the 333 Kelvin. Okay. Now what we have to do? We are going to add the water, right? So water contains H plus and OH minus. So break the bond. Add H and OH. You will get the product. Now this is called as ethanol. Why it is called as ethanol? We have an alkene and also an alcohol. OH containing compounds are called as alcohols, right? So since this compound contains both alkene and alcohol, it is called as ethanol. Okay. Now this ethanol compound undergoes tautomerism. This compound undergoes tautomerism to give the ethanol, to give the ethanol. So what is al? Al means aldehyde. So how we are getting this? How we are getting this? Or These two compounds are interchangeable. This is undergoing tautomerism. So both are having the same molecular formula, but different uh, arrangement of atoms. So they are one of the uh, isomer. So uh, how we are getting this means? You have to shift this hydrogen which is attached to oxygen to this carbon. And you have to shift the bond here. You will get this al aldehyde. Okay. So take the, I'll show you. I'll show you. So what you do, take this hydrogen which is with this oxygen and put it to the alkene carbon and shift the double bond here. Okay, you will end up with this product, CH3CH ethanol. Is this clear? I will show you with one more example also. I will take propyne. If I want to add water to this propyne, what I have to do? How to get the propyne? So for propyne, we have to follow Marconic of addition, right? Because propyne is not symmetrical. Yeah, clear. Okay, Hashira. So it is uh, unsymmetrical system. So here you have to do Marconic of. So break the bond. And this is H plus and OH minus. H has to go to the carbon which has more number of hydrogen. Now if I, if this is carbon 1 and this is carbon 2, carbon 1 has 1 hydrogen, carbon 2 has 0 hydrogen. So the hydrogen of the add, uh, adding molecule have to go to the carbon, triple bonded carbon which has more number of hydrogen. So it has to go here and the negative part has to go to the carbon which has less number of hydrogen. Okay. So this is how we are adding and getting the product. Now here it is from 1 E to all. 1, 2, 3, right? So 3 carbon containing system. So it is from 
between one and two we have a double bond so one in and in the second carbon we have the alcohol so it is prop one in and two all okay now this compound this enol undergoes tautomerism this enol also undergoes tautomerism so what we have to do how we have to do the tautomerism so take the hydrogen from oxygen and put it to the alkene carbon and shift the bond here okay so what you will get ch3 c double bond o ch3 which is called as propanone which is called as propanone okay so this is how you have to tautomerize so tautomerism is uh, one of the type of isomerism under structural isomerism okay tautomerism like we have chain isomer functional isomer positional isomer no so tautomerism is one of the structural isomerism in which the molecular formula will be same but the functional group the functional group will be differing for them tautomers okay so one will be the enol and the other one will be the aldehyde or keto okay for if you are taking ethyne you will end up with aldehyde if you are taking some other alkyne other than this ethyne you will end up with keto so only for ethyne you will get aldehyde for rest of the alkynes you will get keto okay so one of the compound will be the ketone part and another one will be the enol part so this tautomerism is called as keto enol tautomerism so some other tautomerisms are also there but uh, for our syllabus we have only keto enol tautomerism okay so fine we will go with the fifth reaction that is the polymerization reaction of alkynes polymerization so how do we get a polymer by repeating the monomeric units right so we have two different types of polymerization here one is the linear polymerization and the other one is the cyclic polymerization so that cyclic i will discuss uh, next now we will study about the linear polymerization now what is linear polymerization under suitable conditions linear polymerization of ethyne takes place to produce the polyethylene so you remember polyethylene polythene polymer we have prepared in alkenes right so the same way we are going to prepare polyethylene which is also a polymer okay so let me take ethylene i have took uh, n moles of ethylene so how to get the polymer we have to shift the bond just shift this bond here and uh, one electron here and from this also you shift one here and shift another out so we will get a new carbon carbon bond between these two carbon and here we will have double bond and here also we will have a double bond and outside this we will have single bonds so we will end up with this type of product and this is the polyethylene this is polyethylene okay so here this polymer it is formed in the linear fashion so we don't have any branches here so that's why this is called that's linear polymerization got it now coming to the cyclic polymerization for that we have to take three moles of alkyne so here three moles of ethyne i have took okay now this ethyne is put into the iron tube is put into the red hot iron tube and it is heated up to 873 kelvin which is a very very high temperature okay at this very high temperature one of the bond one of the pi bond from the alkyne will come and form the new bond with the carbon carbon okay and uh, this bond also shifts there and that bond also comes here and they will produce the benzene they are producing the benzene so these are the six carbons and these are the newly formed bonds so which is an aromatic compound okay so we are getting aromatic compound from the system now i'll ask you one question instead of this ethyne if i use propyne what will i get instead of ethyne if we take propyne what will we get we will not get benzene for sure right so we will get some other product only so what is the name of that product can anyone guess propyne if i take propyne 
propyne means I have to replace this hydrogen by methyl group, right? I have to replace one of the hydrogen by methyl group. So what will I get if I take propyne? So this is propyne, 3 moles of propyne. So I'll get the same ring, but there will be a substitution, right? There will be a methyl substitution here. So what am I getting? 1, 3, 5 trimethyl benzene we are getting. So this is how you have to uh, do the cyclic polymerization and get the product. Got it? So I hope this is clear to all of you guys. So this is the last reaction of chemical reaction of uh, alkynes. So now let me summarize the alkynes part. Okay. So the general formula is CnH2n minus 2. And for nomenclature, you, we have to use YNE. And we have seen two preparation. One is from calcium carbide. Okay, one is from calcium carbide and the other one is from vicinal dihaline. And in vicinal dihaline, we have used the beta elimination reaction using alcoholic KOH and soda milk. Right. So these two preparations we have seen. Both are very, very important. And coming to the physical properties, they are colorless, orderless, and they will not get dissolved in water. Right. So they are dissolved only in some organic solvents. And coming to the chemical properties, chemical properties, they are acidic in nature. Why they are acidic in nature? Because the electronegativity of the triple bonded carbon is more. Okay, that's why they are acidic in nature. And uh, they react with sodamide to form this ammonia and this sodium ethanide also. And next we have seen the addition of H2. Addition of H2 leads to the formation of alkane, right? And addition of uh, halogen leads to the formation of tetrahaloalkane. And addition of HX leads to the formation of here, it should be single bond, okay? It is not double bond, it is a single bond. And addition of HX. So if symmetrical, system is symmetrical, then add the molecule. While coming to unsymmetrical system, do Marconi cup. Okay, the first step would be the general thing and the second step would be the Marconi cup addition part. Okay, in this addition of HX. Then in addition of H2 also, we have used the same Marconi cup addition for unsymmetrical and for symmetrical, the same thing. And here, tautomerization concept came into existence. And you should know how to form the tautomer. Okay, how to prepare the tautomer. So just uh, revise that part. This is about the addition of H2 and coming to the last reaction that is polymerization. There are two types, linear and cyclic. So cyclic polymerization leads to the formation of a more stable aromatic compound. So this is what we have discussed in alkynes. Okay, yeah. Cyclic polymerization leads to the formation of aromatic compound. Yes, Shamila, cyclic. Good. Now, we are going to uh, see the last topic, but a very important topic of this lesson and for a whole organic chemistry. Okay, that is aromatic hydrocarbons. Aromatic hydrocarbons. So here, the learning objectives under this topic are the introduction, structure of benzene. So mostly, we will discuss about the benzene only here. Okay, because we are dealing with only the hydrocarbon. So the a uh, very easy and very simple and very common uh, high aromatic hydrogen and carbon containing compound is benzene. So throughout this lesson, we will uh, study about the benzene only, preparation of benzene, preparation of, uh, sorry, chemical reactions of benzene. Everything is with benzene, okay? So we will do that. And the resonance and stability of benzene, preparation, chemical property, physical property, etc. Got it? So let us try to complete this. Yeah. We will move on to the first topic. That is the introduction. introduction. So what is the introduction of aromatic compound? So these are also called as arenes. Yes, Suhana, yes. So aromatic compounds, hydrocarbons are also called as arenes. Why they are called as arenes? Most of the arenes possess pleasant order. They possess Pleasant order. Aromatic compounds possess pleasant orders, a sweet smell, a pleasant smell. Okay. 
So aroma means pleasant smelling. Aroma means pleasant smelling. That's why we are calling these compounds as aromatic compounds. So if you are smelling the benzene, it will give it will give some pleasant smell. Okay. So mostly chemicals they will not uh, give the pleasant smell, right? So they will be some kind of uh, dizziness kind of smell only they will produce. But aromatic hydrocarbons they have the pleasant smell. And the most arenes were found to contain the highly unsaturated benzene ring. So what is meant by unsaturation? The double bond and triple bond containing system. Okay. So most of the aromatic compounds contains this benzene ring. And those compounds are called as aromatic compounds. Aromatic compounds are divided into two. One is benzenoid compound and the other one is non-benzenoid compound. Okay. Non-benzenoid but aromatic. So what is the difference between benzenoid and non-benzenoid students? Both are aromatic only. But why they are called as benzenoid and non-benzenoid? If the compound contains the six-membered benzene ring in it, then it is called as benzenoid. So this is benzenoid. And if a compound contains seven-membered ring, so now this is seven-membered, right? So double bond here, double bond, double bond. And there is a double bond. Okay, let me take this tropon compound. Now this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this ring contains 7 carbon. But this compound is aromatic in nature. So that's why it is coming under the non-benzenoid compound. Okay. So let us study about these things. That have at least. That have at least. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. Benzene is six. Yeah. Yeah. This is naphthalene. This is naphthalene, which contains two benzene ring. Benzene contains only one. Okay. One ring. Okay. So, which contains six carbon in it. Okay. So, if two benzene rings are fused together, they will produce an naphthalene. But both rings contain six membering only, right? So, here also it is a six membering. And here also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 carbon only made this ring also. So these two are 6 member rings and this is a 7 member. So that's why this is benzene and this is non benzene. Is this clear for all? Is this clear for all? Yes. Okay. So I'll show you some examples also. First very important example is benzene. And if I am substituting uh, a, a group like a metal, NH3. If I am substituting any group to this benzene, then also it is called as benzene compound. It is also an example for aromatic compound. Now, if I substitute methyl group, it is called as toluene. Now, these two uh, rings you see. But two C is common for both. Both carbons are common. Both the carbons are common for both. Both the carbons are common for both. But still, we have to take that. Still, we have to take that. Okay. This is called as naphthalene. Okay. So, it is this. these two carbons are common for both the rings. But we have to take that carbon for both. We have to consider that carbon. Because without that, two, those two carbon, this ring would have not formed. Right? They are just fused together. Okay. We have to consider that. This is one six-membered and this is another six-membered. I didn't tell that the ring is the six carbon containing ice. I told that it is a six membered, six membered ring. Okay. So here in this biphenyl, you see, yes, in this biphenyl, you see one, two, three, four, five, six. Now these two are the separate, separate ring. And here one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six carbon. Still they are aromatic. Still they are. Aromatic, but the name is different. You see, the name is not naphthalene, it is biphenyl. Okay, because the total number of carbon here it would be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 only. Here we'll have only 10 carbon, but here we are having 12 carbon, right? So the compound itself is different. That is biphenyl, and this is naphthalene. Both are aromatic. So two six membered ring we are having there. Two separate six membered ring we are having, and here the two. Six membered rings are fused together. Got it? So I hope uh, it, this is clear to all of you.
so this is about the introduction of aromatic uh, hydrocarbon now let us move on to the yes structure of benzene so already you might have uh, uh, aware of this right previous slide you want aisha which slide you want my dear this slide or this slide you want me to show this slide first slide this one okay okay take note of it first are you all taking the notes in your notebook or you guys are uh, taking the screenshot of it from the mobile or uh, laptop may i know notebook you guys are writing okay okay am i going very fast do you guys want me to oh all of you are taking in your notebook no no okay taking notes in notebook okay okay so if i am going very fast just tell me okay don't hesitate to tell me if i am going very fast as well i will and tell you it is so okay so everything is clear in the coming classes if you find any difficulties yeah sure okay okay, okay thank you so much to you So, I think Aisha have asked for this link. Aisha, have you completed? Yes. So, examples also you just note it down. Yes, Lakshmi Kant, you have raised your hand. It seems you have any doubt. If you are having any doubt, just tell me. No doubt. Okay, I think he have raised his hand by mistake. No issues. We will move on to the structure of benzene. So this is the structure. So there is six carbon and six hydrogen attached to the carbon. Okay. So we have three double bond in it, and all the twelve atoms, six carbon and six hydrogen, they are present. They are in the same plane. They are in the same plane. okay because the hybridization of all the carbon is sp2 the hybridization all the carbons you see all are having the double bond all the carbons are having the double bond so all are sp2 hybridized so what is the geometry for sp2 hybridized system it is trigonal planar is trigonal planar right so everything is there in the same plane xy plane got it so this is the structure of benzene ring you all would be knowing and if the carbon is sp2 the geometry is trigonal planar and there are three sigma bonds around each carbon and one pi bond around each carbon okay that will be three sigma bond and one pi bond around each carbon okay two sigma bond is between carbon and carbon and one sigma bond is between carbon and hydrogen so this is that okay so let me show you the orbital uh, containing system diagram also so this is the orbital representation so we have six carbon six carbon and here carbon carbon sigma bonds we have how many carbon carbon sigma bonds we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 very good yes six carbon carbon sigma bond we have and there is one p orbital very good very good students very good it is six so and we have one uh, unhybridized p orbital for each carbon and there is one electron present in all those unhybridized p orbital so now all the carbon atoms are in a single plane p orbitals are aligned they are aligned in a perpendicular manner okay to that way this is the plane all the p orbitals are perpendicular to each other and each p orbital is overlapping in a sideways manner to form that pi bond okay so this is one pi bond and this is the second pi bond and this is the third pi bond so we have uh, six carbon carbon sigma bond and three carbon carbon pi bond now these pi electrons they are delocalized they are delocalized so here in the structure you see they are overlapping between carbon 1 and 2 and here between 3 and 4 and here between 5 and 6 now in the structure you see it is between 2 3 4 5 and 6 1 so they are uh, 
resonating they are resonating so since resonance is possible what is meant by resonance resonance is delocalization of electrons right so if the electron is getting delocalized in the compound then that delocalization brings the stability to the compound if a compound contains more number of resonance structure then we can say that the compound is more stable in nature okay so the delocalization of electrons brings the stability in benzene so there are two resonance structure possible for benzene uh, one is the previous uh, structure which i have shown you and this is the second structure we have two resonance structure it brings the stability so is this clear this is very easy and you might have already studied this i have already taught this in goc lesson also right so the same thing is here shall we move on with the preparation of benzene are you all ready yes okay so there are uh, three preparation we have three preparation so first of all benzene is commercially isolated from coal tar you all know the tar right so the carbon containing compound so it is commercially isolated from the coal tar and the laboratory preparation laboratory method and this is the industrial preparation and in the laboratory if we have to prepare benzene in very small amount then we have to do that we can do that by three methods first is by cyclic polymerization of ethane which we have studied now now in the reactions of alkanes we have discussed this no the same reaction the ethane with red hot iron tube it produces benzene the same reaction okay the first method of preparing benzene okay is from the ethane is from an aliphatic compound ethane then the second preparation is from decarboxylation of aromatic acid decarboxylation so this the same type of reaction we have studied in alkanes preparation there we have took the aliphatic uh, salt of carboxylic acid and here i am taking the aromatic salt of carboxylic acid okay now if i attach cooh to this benzene if i attach cooh to this benzene this compound is called as benzoic acid now if i want to make the salt from this benzoic acid i will have to treat this with another compound and i will get co minus and na plus so this is the sodium salt of benzoic acid sodium salt of benzoic acid this salt is treated with naoh and cao do you guys remember the name of this uh, reagent let me see who is telling this what is this what is the name of this mixture sodium oxide and calcium oxide sodium hydroxide calcium oxide mixture is called as and now you remember so you guys are not studying or what उटर then the two CO3 will come out and this hydrogen will go and form the bond with this carbon we will get C6H6 and then C6H6 is CO3 is gone out okay so this is the decarboxylation preparation now the third is the reduction of phenol third method is the reduction of phenol so what is phenol उसमें and here if you see what is reduction 
removal of oxygen. So what you do, remove the oxygen, Z and O is removed, and we are getting C6H6. Okay. So by reduction of phenol, you are getting the benzene. So these are the very important three main preparation of benzene. Okay. Now it's already 357, right? So tomorrow we can discuss. Tomorrow we can. Yeah, Deepa. Yes, tell me. You have raised your hand, it seems. Okay. Tomorrow we can discuss the chemical properties of benzene. So we can complete, I think we are not able to complete this lesson today. So tomorrow for sure we can complete this lesson and we can move on to the next lesson. That is P block. Okay. So we will move on to the P block lesson tomorrow. P block lesson is not included for you in your board exam. So it is very new to you. So try to join the class. We will complete this lesson and we will start a new lesson tomorrow. Okay. So today what we have discussed? We have discussed the chemical properties of uh, alkynes and all the introduction, the preparations of benzenes. Okay. Tomorrow we will go to properties. If you are having any doubt, you can raise your hand or you can ask me. Or you can ask me. Yeah. If you are not having any doubt, then we can uh, meet tomorrow. Thank you all so much for listening to today's lecture. Okay. Okay. No doubt. No doubt. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Ajahn. And thank you, dear students. Thank you all. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aisha.